This is right out of a book. It shows the lobe fin fish crawling out of the ocean and becoming you. And you say, wow, what, what, what question should you ask? What's the evidence? Here it is. That's it. They haven't found one scrap in between the two. But look what the book says at the top of the page. Missing links show how the process took place. You've got it. How can something missing they've never found show anything? Do textbooks ever deceive you? I believe this one did. Probably wasn't on purpose, but that's what's happened anyhow. I've got a question. Even if you can line up things and it looks like an evolutionary progression, does that mean it evolved that way? Of course not. I might be able to line these things up, but that doesn't mean one thing evolved from another thing, right? It's just not going to happen. Well, what about origin of birds? And when you look at the magazines, they say that birds came from reptiles. So what question do you ask when you see this? What's the evidence? Ah, they said we've got the evidence. No problem whatsoever. There's the fossil. You can look, for, look at it yourself. And there's what he looked like. Well, it wasn't but a couple of months after they published this that they received some disturbing news. They found out that it was nothing but a hoax. And the newspapers did carry that article, and I'm glad they did. Well, they said, we've got enough evidence. That's not a problem. We've got this one. There's some feathers. And here's another one. But you know, there's a lot of dissension on what those things were. Were they really feathers? What was the function of this stuff? They don't really know, do they? Okay. National Geographic actually states it this way. We can now say that birds are theropods, meaning descendants of dinosaurs, just as confidently as we say that humans are mammals. Do we really know this? Not everybody agrees. Doug Henderson, an artist, says it this way, a scientific hypothesis will not simply enter the artwork as a possibility. Rather, it takes off like a known truth and is expressed to the extreme. Not everybody agreed with National Geographic at all. In fact, Alan Fiducia from the University of North Carolina, who is an evolutionist specializing in birds, says it this way. When they put that feathered dinosaur on the cover last year, I threw 30 years worth of magazines out of my house. He said, National Geographic's journalism is a joke. Then he said, the hair-like filaments that accompany some fossils come from beneath the skin. I can duplicate the effect by skinning the tail of a modern lizard. Another bird expert from the Smithsonian Institute, Stores Olson, accused the magazine of engaging in sensationalistic, unsubstantiated, tabloid journalism. Clearly, he wrote, the magazine is not receiving competent consultation in certain scientific matters. He is especially galled by the society's assertion that a wide variety of dinosaurs definitely wore feathers. This is just a lie, he says. He said, there is not one undisputed example of a dinosaur with feathers. None. The public deserves to know this. Do you read that in the newspapers? No, 